Well, you may have noticed that we don't have our kayaks with us on this trip. The Colonel and I are heading out for a relaxing, exciting boat trip on the beautiful Tippy Dam Pond in Northern Michigan. Not the Upper Peninsula, but Northern Michigan of the Lower Peninsula. So we got two nights on the Big Manistee River in Tippy Dam Pond. Beautiful, beautiful campsites. I mentioned it in our last trip up there last year about how amazing the campsites are when we were kayaking through Tippy Dam. And I will link that video up here in the cards if you were interested in checking out that video. Hopefully we don't have a problem finding a good campsite because it is July 5th. A lot of people are still observing the 4th of July. But we aren't arriving until after 4 p.m. So hopefully there'll be lots of camping options for us by then, by the time we get there. I'm really excited about getting on the water. The weather is beautiful. I know Colonel can't wait. Can't wait. We might even find a rope swing for the Colonel. We're gonna look. Anyway, thanks for coming along, guys. It's gonna be a great time. Colonel, this is not what I had planned. <laughs> no. I hope this doesn't last. Boy, it's coming out pretty good. <laughs> yes. No. Oh. Well, we're getting close. We got about another hour before we get on the water. And the traffic has been horrendous coming south. Everybody is exiting northern Michigan, so we picked the perfect time to head north. Oh. Man, this is glorious. We are here. Tippy Pond, here we come. So this boat ramp here is called Norman's Landing. It's kind of the midway point in Tippy Dam Pond. Very convenient for accessing the many, many campsites we're getting ready to go see. Here we go, Colonel! didn't make it. I think we just found our campsite, Colonel. I think so. I like it. Site 17 right up the hill there. It is a beauty. There's pine trees, fire pit, well-established site. Anyway, we decided to head on down towards Red Bridge just a little further just to make sure there's nothing better. But within a half hour, if we don't find anything, we're coming back and claiming this site. I don't like all the wind. It's pretty breezy out here today. So we're going to look for a calmer spot. But if uh, there's nothing better up ahead, we will be back here to Site 17. The Colonel and I are having some arguments about which campsite to take. Oh, he's so ready to claim. Options. He's ready to claim number 17, and I agree. It's a very nice site. It was a little breezy, but he, you know, just like the comment I received the other day on my channel, I bitch a lot for a guy with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I can be a little picky, but I want the perfect site. So we're gonna look, go around this next corner right up here and i know of one more site around the corner to the right where it would be blocking the wind if we don't like that spot we are heading back to site 17 and setting up camp so this is the other campsite i was looking for it doesn't have a number the sign just says camping right there but if you wanted more privacy and quiet and peacefulness this is where you'd want to be and the wind is blocked right here the wind's coming from that direction, so it's very calm here. But we both agree that we like Site 17 better, so that's where we're going. That breeze might play in our favor, keep those mosquitoes away, keep the smoke out of our eyes. And we got a little bit of a view being perched up high. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain climbing up and down, getting over gear out of the boat and getting our firewood up the hill, but it was a beautiful sight. Colonel, thoughts on that site? Yeah, I think that's the hill and the uh, extreme wind is the only bad thing. Yeah. I think the wind will lay down, later it gets. I hope so. Until the thunderstorm comes. Yeah. And then it'll probably triple. <laughs> the shred my tarp. <laughs> there, see, as soon as we come out around the uh, this little peninsula here, man, the wind's like instantly 15, 20 mile an hour. It feels good though, really. It does feel good right now, but I just know it's going to whip my tarp around all night long. All right, site 17, here we come.
All right, we'll get this fire going, get her burnt down, get some good coals, and cook some steaks and sweet corn tonight. So here is the view from camp. Not bad. There's the colonel. Let's go take a look out over here. Check out the beautiful tippy dam pond. It wasn't our first choice, but it was a good choice. Very comfortable out here. I can see people camping up there, up there. There's still a lot of people out here camping and our favorite sites around the corner here were all taken. Site 31, 32. What do you think, Colonel? Pretty happy with this site? Very happy with this site. Kind of getting away from the wind as far as I can. So that's where I'm gonna put my hammock, right there between those two trees. But I like this openness right here. It's a pretty nice view. Tucked in the pines. Very nice camp. You've been into the chips? I've been in all three wanna, of them. You think we're gonna have a raccoon issue here like we did in no. season three? There ain't no coons on Tippy Dam Pond. <laughs> How many years of corn are you gonna eat? Oh man, I, I wanna say two, but I know at least one. Okay. Should I, just, I make a... I'd say just cook one. For me. Are you serious? Because I got that steak. Yeah. I don't think the steak will keep. Wow. You hear that rumble? Yeah. Woo! Alright, I'll cook these three. We'll save these three for tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy with one today. I have one today, one tomorrow. I'm just good with that. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Colonel, we gotta get this tarp up. Close call. It's sprinkling. Let's take these little strings out of the pockets here. Oh. It's still coming, isn't it? Yeah. This, this way, we're just going to pull it down. Now I'm getting wet. The sweet corn is just about done. Oh, yeah, it's looking really good. I like a little bit of char on my kernels. Mm -hmm. Kernel, do you like your kernels? A little char. It makes it taste really good, like a fire. Mm -mm. You know, in all honesty, I wouldn't mind staying here a, a second night. Yeah, now that we've got everything set up, especially this uh, rain fly, yeah. which I'm glad we put up because we got the sprinkles I thought was going to cut loose on us. Yeah. The rain front just went right north of us. We were lucky. And plus, I did stake my tent for the first time. Yep. Oh. It was so windy when we got here. Now it's like dead calm. Tranquility describes this scene right now. Yeah. And pretty soon, good eating Ohio sweet corn oil. That's gonna be good, I haven't had sweet corn yet this year. Steak is next. Oh. People that don't do this don't know what they're missing. No, they don't. Getting away from everything, this, this is the best way to relax right here. Uh-huh. Man, I do like a good RV camping trip with my wife. But we're not gonna That's number that. one for me, but man, this is, I don't think we're going to hear When you can't have your wife with you, this is the next best thing. You know, there's got to be a lot of people out there that have a little a little boat like you got. A little John boat with a motor on it. Yeah. Nothing you know? big. And it doesn't have to... There's something about it that's better than kayaking to me. I love kayaking. Oh, I do too. I love through paddles. You know, accomplishing something. Getting yes. from point A to point B and camping along the way. Multi days. It, many it's, miles. It's kind of like backpacking. you got everything with you. Mm -hmm. You're self-contained. you got to survive on what you brought. Yeah. Unless you have a... A little restaurant along the way, right? Maybe some water, maybe some rest, maybe some vault toilets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about having the boat. You get to see so much more. It's quicker. Yeah, we can see it all quicker, yeah. and we can. Uh, we don't bring sweet corn on a kayak trip. True. I mean, we can have real food, not backpacking yeah. food. We take a lot of luxuries on the boat, and you can see the area. You can explore the area so much quicker. Yep. So if one site doesn't work out, like on a kayak, if this didn't work out, you're gonna be paddling oh yeah for another hour possibly to find another good site you and know here the boats you zip down the lake yeah river yeah five minutes you're at another site which is what we did tonight <laughs> yeah yeah well, i think we uh checked out five six seven sites at least oh yeah yep i think we got a winner here's a close-up look of to be damn pond that way a couple miles to the red bridge trailhead parking lot at the southern end of the Manistee River Trail on the NCT. 
we got some other folks camping out over here. Right there where the uh, sand dune trails are. There's a campsite up there. Up there above us is River Road. There's a lot of car camping areas along River Road. And back this way, several miles, is Tippy Dam. And then a few more miles down this way to the left is where we put in at Norman's Landing Boat Ramp. All right, it's time to try this sweet corn. No salt? No. What? Oh, man, I love salt on my sweet corn. Oh, you don't need it. Yes, it's good it does. sweet corn. You don't need it. This, who said this is good sweet corn? Just because it's a higher sweet corn doesn't mean it's good sweet corn. Right. Probably picked five days ago. Okay, we got the um, parquet right. spray butter. It's better than nothing. I didn't want to bring a stick of real butter from home. This is from last year's boat camping trips. So we're going to get some of that on there. So the butter and salt sticks better. So this is a high sweet corn. My buddies grow this down near Marietta, Ohio. And they are the first ones in the state of Ohio to grow sweet corn. They grow about two or 300 acres of hand-picked sweet corn. And they pick it at 2 a.m. They have some migrant workers and they have stadium lights mounted to their wagons. And they pick it at 2 a.m. And then it is all distributed to over 20 roadside stands around West Virginia and Ohio. Pretty amazing operation. But today, I'm just glad to have some fresh Ohio sweet corn here at Tippy Dam Pond with a beautiful campsite and a beautiful campfire. Salt and pepper. And you can see I definitely got a little char on that side, but that's all right. I like the, a good char on my sweet corn when it's cooked over the fire. Oh man. Pretty good. Yeah, it's darn good. Mm. It's the same variety I grow. Mine is just about oh, a week off. So next week we'll have my own sweet corn. Mm. That is so good, it would definitely lure Bigfoot in. Oh yeah. He's probably never had sweet corn this far north. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that it is 945 and this is how light it is. Oh yeah. This is an hour longer than at home, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't even have the lighting turned up on my camera. This is actually how light it is in northern Michigan at 945. Unbelievable. The days are so long right now. This would be the time of the year to go for an FKT if you could hike in the heat. Oh, yeah. Man, the days are so long. It does not get much more peaceful and tranquil than it is right now. No. Wow. Steak time. 10 14, and it's steak time. Yep. Salt. <laughs> Pepper. Oh, geez, it came out fast. The steak was nice and pretty. Now it's all pale looking. It looks like a pork chop because it was <laughs> soaking in water in our cooler. I'm sure it's going to taste fine, though. <clears throat> Man, the mosquitoes are getting bad. Yeah, they are. All right, she's ready for the barbie. All right, here we go. T-bone steak over the fire. Not bad. This is definitely the latest I've ever eaten steak. <laughs> well, it is almost 11 o'clock and it's starting to sprinkle and the radar is showing storms coming in. So I think we're gonna call it a night and hit the sack. We were able to get the fire going with the coals. That's always nice when there's just enough coals down there to stoke it up the next morning. And no bugs yet, Colonel. Yeah. Yeah, I slept really darn good last night. 
I don't know about I you. I think I was uh, up till 3 before I went to sleep. 3 a.m., huh? 3 a.m. Uh -huh. I, I think that's the honest truth. Well, I can't rebuke that, Colonel, because I was sleeping so soundly, I didn't hear you snoring when you were sleeping. Well, that's good. You just admitted that you were sleeping then. After 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Time for some coffee. Bacon's just about done. Looking really good. Got the perfect fire temperature, believe it or not. Yeah, that's hard to do. You can tell you're a skilled outdoorsman. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should throw more wood in the fire. I don't know. Let's see how much the uh, vegetables sizzle up. Mmm. Man, it's gonna be good. I love that sound. Man, this is living. You got one life, you live it. I would say it's time for the eggs. Just the right amount of heat. And stuff sticking nicely. Once that heats back up and starts cooking good, it'll, it'll unstick. Yeah. All right, Just we're finished. It. Serve it up. Oh my goodness, that's hitting the spot. I was hungry, oh, I'll admit it. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to figure out something with this cooler because the the meat was submerged in water. It's kind of yeah. gross. Yours, yeah. My steak was completely soaked in water, and the bratwurst are in water since all that ice melted. It's got to be a uh, better solution. It, we iced it at what, eleven o'clock? Yeah. Yesterday morning, and it was melted by last late afternoon. Being in the back of a hot boat probably accelerated the melting of the ice. Right. But it's a cheap Coleman cooler. Yeah. What do you guys use for a cooler that's not an expensive Yeti? I think I need to upgrade. Put in the comments what I should get for a good cooler that's not going to break the bank. <laughs> There's got to be something out there, some yeah, more a generic cooler. We have an absolutely gorgeous day here on Tippy Dam Pond. And one thing that I really enjoy doing is exploring potential future campsites. So let's go get on the water and go check some of these out. And we're off on day two at Tippy Dam Pond. quick stop in here to visit the Government Island campsite. All right, let's go check it out. You can do it, Colonel, it's worth the climb. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. 
Very nice site. Government Island. It even comes with a morel mushroom. Many, many places to hang a hammock back in there. Wow. You could hang a whole city of hammocks in here, Colonel. This is a little island here. An absolutely gorgeous spot to camp, but there's a sign there that says no camping. So many of these sites that I thought were camping sites actually say no camping. So there's actually very few that we have found so far with a, a blue blaze on the plastic signpost that actually is a designated camping location. So uh, yeah, I'm a little upset that there's not more camping here. You could probably get away with it, but if you're following the rules, you know, there's not a lot of camping options here like I thought. Another beautiful place up here in the Pines that we're heading to check out. We saw people there yesterday. Probably a non-camping area, but we'll find out here in a moment. Another non-camping area. I can't believe it. This is just fantastic. So you're back here in this little cove and you have all of this to yourself. Beautiful view. Wow. I just don't understand why you can't camp in any of these spots. Here we go, Colonel! Woohoo! Site 31 and 32. One of the best sites in the whole pond. Whoa. Woo. Backflip right off the get-go. And there he goes. And upside down. <laughs> we have a ride back to camp. It's a beauty. All right, I'll stock back up with firewood. Man, we are having an absolutely fantastic time just hanging out here in this beautiful campsite. Got the fire going. The weather is just perfect. Gentle breeze, yeah. plenty of sun. And it's only like 2.30, so we got all afternoon, evening yet. There is a rainstorm predicted for about 8, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, maybe 8 or 10 o'clock. So we are going to prep everything in camp for this rain tonight before we go to bed because it's supposed to rain. There's like a 70, 80% chance of rain throughout the entire night and all day tomorrow. So we're probably gonna be packing up in rain and driving the mile across the pond back to the vehicle in the rain. So we're gonna get as much prepped and prepared tonight for this rain. So we don't have to uh, get too wet tomorrow morning. And it's gonna really damper the footage. <laughs> yeah, there's not gonna be a lot of footage tomorrow. Well, we're back out on the water again, heading up to the Red Bridge parking area to check out a little bit of the Manistee River. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so maybe you do a spin on the Red Bridge. Uh, remember that, that song? Uh, shoot, I see a red door and I want to paint it black. He's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're not gonna mow the grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a lot of grass in this water, especially in a, around the... Oh, there's some right now. Look out. Whoa. That's floating grass. We decided to take a little trip to the Manistee River. Well, we're on the Manistee River, but we're going up the Red Bridge. We're going to check out a little bit of the Manistee River. Maybe go on up river a little ways. Oh, look out. We just hit a stump. I think we need to be a little more careful here. So that sign up there says no camping. They're the white signs. But I swear last year when me and Colonel stopped by here, that was a campsite. I'm really confused about why there's so many sites that say no camping now. Pretty shallow here, so we're kind of being careful. I don't know if you can see that through the camera, but we're in uh, less than three foot of water. I know there's deep channels through here, but we don't know where they're at. So we're kind of just taking our time almost to the Red Bridge. 
We made it to the Red Bridge, also known as Coates Highway. This is a popular parking area for hiking the Manistee River Trail and the North Country Trail. Newly built just two years ago, I believe. Well, we feel like we are officially in the Manistee River section after going underneath the Red Bridge. And the beginning of the Manistee River Trail is right up the hill there. And it follows the river. Oh, for 10 or 11 miles to Seton Creek Campground where you can cross the suspension bridge, come back on the NCT side, and it pops out of the woods right over there. For a total loop of about 19 to 20 miles. It is hot. Colonel, you keeping cool back there? Not too bad. I'm trying to watch the ground. There's yeah, deep there's a... spots and shallow spots. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, well, that was a three-quarter flip. There he is. I give it a 7.5. Well, we made it back from our Red Bridge excursion. Ready to kick back and enjoy the fire for the rest of the evening. Time to start thinking about supper. So we got the fire loaded up here, waiting for those to turn into coals. And we got some steaks and some bratwurst for tonight, some more sweet corn. So I think the rest of the evening, we're just gonna hang out and chill here around camp and enjoy the fire and our last four hours of daylight before the rain comes in. Hopefully this rain this late misses us. And we get a two hour window. Yeah, it would be nice to have Maybe just rain overnight while we're sleeping. I don't really want to drive the boat back in the rain, but that's the way the forecast is looking right now. All right, so we were aware that there was a possibility of thunderstorms tonight, all night, and tomorrow morning. But what we did not know is that these storms could possibly be severe. I mean, if you look at these cells out in Lake Michigan right now, they are red. They're coming right towards us. And I know Colonel is ready to prep for this storm. Colonel, what's your thoughts? You know, I'm just really happy that, you know, my uh, REI Camp Dome 2, I am surrounded by two aluminum poles that intersect and they cross. <laughs> so I've got, you know, this aluminum dome protecting me. And it's probably not going to draw any electric at all. <laughs> you got lightning rods on your REI tent is what you're saying. Basically, yes. I I'll probably be all charged up tonight. <laughs> so we just found out that we have severe thunderstorms coming across Lake Michigan right now heading right. our way and yeah the smoke's getting bad if you say white rabbit the smoke will uh, divert and go around you anyway um i don't like being in a rainstorm in my hammock setup i got to anchor down i'm going to pack most of my arc haul z packs arc haul tonight so i'm ready for this rainstorm uh we we lowered the pitch on the hennessy hammock no not a hammock uh the hennessy tarp and colonel's lucky he has a tent i would rather be in my uh, duplex for sure for a rainstorm but it is what it is we're going to ride this thing out I think the worst part is going to be riding the boat back to the truck tomorrow for 20 minutes for about the, whatever, two miles maybe back to the truck. We'll probably get soaked if it's raining, but we got the firewood under the tarp and we're going to try to keep this fire going through the rain that is less than an hour and a half away from hitting us. Stay tuned. All right, we have just made an executive decision. Ooh, that's a high class decision. Whew. We are packing up and we're heading an hour and a half south to Nuevo State Park. And why is that, Jason? That is because there is a 100% chance of rain in two hours. 90% no, no, no. chance, chance of one hour. In one hour here. Yeah. And then it's going to be rain all night long, all day tomorrow. And all day tomorrow. So no, we, we're not chicken. We're not, yeah, we can endure the rain, but if we can pack up and go to another state park and enjoy. A dry evening and dry morning, an hour and a half away. Well, and most importantly, not 
drive a boat across the exactly. same pond in a storm. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I love venturing out to new state parks and seeing new areas. Now, we have been to New Wago. We'll talk about that later. But we know, so we know a little bit about New Wago, and I think, I think it's worth it. It was nice, what I remember of it. Yeah. I don't want to leave here, believe me. This campsite is amazing. I love it here. Goodness. We're all set up. We're ready for the rain, but... It's about ready to go to crap. <laughs> oh, it's going to get crappy real quick. All right, let's pack it up and move on. All right, we are all packed up. Man, that was, uh, what, 15, 10 minute? That was a whirlwind. Man, alive. All the extra woods in the boat. We are chowing down the last of our sweet corn right now. No as as, yeah. <laughs> it's already sprinkling. Yeah. As soon as we finish this corn, hopping in the boat. 15 minute drive back to our truck. We'll see you at New Wago State Park. All right, here we go. We are leaving camp and it is sprinkling. It's actually starting to rain now. Heading to New Wago State Park. It's 640 and we're heading towards the truck. We'll be at New Wago State Park by 830. Oh my gosh, we got soaked. It is pouring now. Obviously, I couldn't get my camera out. I would have ruined my camera. It's raining too bad. But we just got the boat pulled up out of the boat ramp and we are hitting the road. Wow. We would be getting hammered, Colonel. My goodness. Look at that, Colonel. It's dry. It's raining up there. Look at oh, it. No. <laughs> We are in the eye of the storm now. Are you glad we left, Colonel? I'm a little glad we left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the rain, but it is coming down in buckets. We made a good call leaving Tippy Pond. We were heading to New Wago State Park, but there's been another change of plans. We decided to go even further south to Iona, Ionia. Uh, state recreation area and uh, we're going to try to find a campsite there. It's going to be about 9.30 when we arrive so hopefully we can get there just in time before dark and find a place to set up camp. It's supposed to be dry there until tomorrow afternoon. Sounds good to me. Well, I've been reading some of the campground reviews of Ionia State Recreation Area. Most of them are good but there are some bad reviews. Colonel? People complaining about ticks and gypsy moths and poison ivy. Yeah. So we'll be covered in ticks, gypsy moths, and poison <laughs> ivy, but we won't be wet. <laughs> this is why we're heading south. This is looking better already. I'm liking this, Colonel. We made the right decision going south. Yes, sir. Up to 68 degrees. 82 degrees where we're going. Yeah. Better yet. Look at that red cell that we just came out of. Wow. And now it looks like we're in the clear for quite a while. It's almost 11 o'clock here at Ionia State Recreation Area. And we're having a late night dinner. Some brats and a ribeye steak that the Colonel and I are going to split. What do you think about this, Colonel? How are the mosquito? What's the mosquito situation like here? Well, that uh, whatever I used uh, seems to help a lot, so it's good. Not as intolerable as it once was. You mean my my deep or my Picardin? I think it was the deep. Okay, the spray. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely helps. Um, yeah. So it was, it was the spray. It was the deep. <sighs> See, that's a lot they're of they're ruthless here, man. I had to cover myself, and the gypsy moths are out. The size of a bat. <laughs> yeah. Stick turned out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Even after being submerged in cooler water for two days, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and so did the bratwurst. Good dinner at 11 p.m. Mosquitoes are ruthless here. Ugh. It's horrible. Ugh. I'm standing in, it's not even cold out, but I gotta stand here in the smoke to keep the mosquitoes off me.
Good morning here from Ionia State Recreation Area where the mosquitoes attack in droves. It is so miserable. I've applied Procardin and DEET numerous times and I swear within minutes they're back at biting you again. It was a hot muggy night, um, probably 77 degrees until morning, early in the morning hours and I was finally able to put, put a quilt over me partially but man it was a, it was a hot muggy one. But I'll take that over camping out in the rain, packing up in the rain, and driving the boat back to the truck in the rain. So, and we're an hour and a half closer to home, so that's good. But we've got a nice fire here, enjoying the last moments of it here before we take off and head home. Well, we had a great time camping and boating in Michigan, heading home to Belle Fountain, Ohio. Tippy Dam Pond was so awesome. It definitely deserves a trip back. There's so many awesome campsites. It's just a beautiful area in general. It's too bad we got rained out, but we will definitely be back. Colonel, any final thoughts on this trip? Oh man, so relaxing. I, I was very impressed with Tippy Dam. So, recommend it to anybody. Absolutely. Well, time to get back to the real world and get some work done. Thank you so much for coming along. We really appreciate it. Until next time, this is the Colonel. I'm Jason Wish. Wishing Wish you, you a great, great time on your next adventure. Colonel, do you know what all the rope swings and Tippy Dam Pond have in common? No, what's that? They all have my fingerprints! Oh!